everyone! In this video, we are going to talk about the principles of how hyperspectral imaging works and the main applications of this technology. We are also going to talk about the advantages and the disadvantages of using hyperspectral imaging. Hyperspectral imaging collects and processes information from across the electromagnetic spectrum. The goal of hyperspectral imaging is to obtain the spectrum for each pixel in the image of a scene with the purpose of finding objects, identifying materials, or detecting processes. Whereas the human eye sees color of visible light in mostly three bands, red, green, and blue, spectral imaging divides the spectrum into many more bands. This technique of dividing images into bands can be extended beyond the visible. In hyperspectral imaging, the recorded spectra have fine wavelength resolution and cover a wide range of wavelengths. Hyperspectral imaging, or imaging spectroscopy, combines the power of digital imaging and spectroscopy. For each pixel in an image, a hyperspectral camera acquires the light intensity for a large number of continuous spectral bands. Every pixel in the image thus contains a continuous spectrum. The process of detecting cancer using a hyperspectral camera is simple. First, the camera will emit a hyperspectral radiation towards the desired area, which will be partially absorbed and reflected off the tissue. Then, the camera sensors will receive the reflected hyperspectral signature unique to each region. Based on the data received, the image will be evaluated to determine whether there is evidence of a tumor or not. In the case of a tumor present, the safe margin will be assessed before resection. Why the safe margin? Well, upon resection, complete removal of the cancerous tissue will prevent a return of cancer. However, the cancerous roots cannot be detected. Therefore, to ensure a complete removal, some of the healthy tissue surrounding the tumor will also be resected. One of the major applications of hyperspectral imaging is likely to be in neurosurgery. While malignant primary brain tumors rank only 13th in the list of cancer incidence rates, their particularly poor prognosis results in them being the fifth most common cause of cancer deaths in under 65s. Among children, they are the second most common form of cancer and the most common form of cancer death. Brain tumors, more than any other cancers, can resemble normal neurological tissue, making them difficult to differentiate. Unlike many tumors, they infiltrate the surrounding tissue and their borders are indistinct and difficult to identify. Yet in the brain, it is essential to correctly identify the boundaries so as to protect the surrounding brain tissue. Retinal imaging, spectroscopy, and fundus imaging have always held a major role in detection and management of the ophthalmic diseases. It also provides functional maps. For illustration, oxygen saturation maps show ischemic areas from diabetes and venous occlusions. However, obtaining retinal spatial spectral data has been difficult due to the saccades and long data acquisition times. The current retinal spectral imaging approaches are incapable of true snapshot operation over a wide spectral range and with a large number of spectral bands. A snapshot imaging spectrometer has far-reaching applicability that acquires a complete spatial spectral image cube in approximately 3 milliseconds from 450 to 700 nanometers with 50 bands, eliminating motion of artifacts and pixel misregistration. In comparison with the fundus camera, 
the instrument returns true color retinal images for comparison to standard fundus images and for image validation while the patient is still dilated. Hyperspectral microscopy is an advanced visualization technique that combines hyperspectral imaging with state-of-the-art optics and computer software to enable the rapid identification of materials at the micro and nano scales. Technology called Cytoviva is based on this principle and allows us to produce visual images that have seven times the intensity than standard dark field microscope optics. Integrated hyperspectral imaging on the microscope enables capture of the unique VNIR reflectance spectra, 400 nanometers to 1000 nanometers, of nanoscale materials within a wide range of biological and composite environments. The system creates a hyperspectral image of these samples, enabling the nanomaterials to be spectrally characterized and mapped throughout the entire sample. The primary advantage to hyperspectral imaging is that, because an entire spectrum is acquired at each point, the operator needs no prior knowledge of the sample, and post processing allows all available information from the dataset to be mined. Hyperspectral imaging can also take advantage of the spatial relationships among the different spectra in a neighborhood, allowing more elaborate spectral spatial models for a more accurate segmentation and classification of the image. The primary disadvantages are cost and complexity. Fast computers, sensitive detectors, and large data storage capacities are needed for analyzing hyperspectral data. Significant data storage capacity is necessary since hyperspectral cubes are large, multi-dimensional datasets, potentially exceeding hundreds of megabytes. All of these factors greatly increase the cost of acquiring and processing hyperspectral data. Also, one of the hurdles researchers have had to face is finding ways to program hyperspectral satellites to sort through data on their own and transmit only the most important images, as both transmission and storage of that much data could prove difficult and costly. As a relatively new analytical technique, the full potential of hyperspectral imaging has not yet been realized. So all in all, although hyperspectral imaging can prove expensive to obtain, it is a great way to measure the spectral signatures, or chemical compositions, of all features within the sensor's field of view. As mentioned earlier, it can be used to detect a range of ophthalmic diseases, ischemic areas, and cancerous cells. It has also been used in agriculture, geology, astronomy, and many other areas of research. It has been proven especially useful in assessing environmental disasters such as oil spills or storms, something we would not predict with a regular camera or, or the human eye. We hope you learned a little more about hyperspectral imaging today, and thank you for watching. Please share this video with others.